Hello and welcome to the Dr. Grant Show. In honor of February, let's talk about your heart. Chakra, that is. Today's show topic, what no one tells you about your heart chakra. Your heart chakra is responsible for regulating emotion. And if you've ever had a time where you felt lonely, if you felt disconnected from yourself and are having trouble finding your higher purpose, it is possible that your heart chakra is blocked. But before we go into that, let's delve a little bit deeper into chakras and what are they? There are a total of seven chakras in your body and there are several minor chakras. Now, chakra is derived from the Sanskrit word, which means wheel. And how to envision your chakras is essentially several spinning wheels or discs of light that are along your spine, starting at the base, going all the way to the top of your head. The seven major chakras include the root chakra, the sacral chakra, solar plexus, heart chakra, which is your fourth chakra, throat chakra, third eye chakra, and finally your crown chakra. Now, as I've previously mentioned, the heart chakra is your fourth chakra. It is responsible for regulating your emotion. The chakras below your heart chakra, which would be your root, sacral, and solar plexus chakra, are considered your more primal chakras. In the center is your heart chakra, and above these chakras are the additional three major chakras, which would be your throat, third eye, and crown chakra with the heart connecting the three. The root chakra is responsible for your survival instinct. So anytime you feel like your home is being uprooted or you don't feel safe in your home, your root chakra is activated and also blocked if you don't feel safe. You're constantly in what's called scarcity mindset, where you feel like everything is unstable. And a common indicator of this is where's the money? Everything has to go to where's the money? How does this affect my paycheck? Where's the money? Where's the money? Where's the money? <laughs> your sacral chakra is your creativity. So anytime you've ever felt blocked, this is where your sacral chakra needs to be opened up and released. Your solar plexus chakra entails having your sense of self. So it's extremely important to recognize that neither chakra is more important than the other. It is not a hierarchical order so far as how you rank them. Each chakra is equal in its importance to your body. However, for the month of February, also my birthday month, if you must know, I had to delve into your heart chakra because this is the month that I will dedicate and give to you lessons in self-love. Not love in general, but if and once we learn how to fully embrace ourselves and understand what nourishes ourselves, this is when all other facets of our lives begin to open up. This is where the wealth begins to open up. This is where the prosperity prosperity in your mind begins to open up. This is where relationships bloom and blossom. This is where your career begins to take off. So it is extremely crucial, extremely pivotal to take the first steps or continue the next steps in your journey to understanding what lights you up and what helps you love yourself. And that's the reason why we're covering the heart chakra today. Let's talk a little bit more about 
when it's blocked and what we can do about that. Hmm? So when your heart chakra is blocked, often many people experience negative emotions. And if these negative emotions such as loneliness, feeling unfulfilled, lack of forgiveness, inability to trust, loss of hope. If these emotions allow themselves to take root, continue, set up shop, encode themselves into your not only biological DNA and cellular structure, but your spiritual and metaphysical DNA, if left unchecked and allowed to run rampant without the proper tools to help release and address and solve the problem, this is where the seeds of disease begin to take hold and take root. And I don't want that for you because it is preventable. Now, there are things that you can do. You're not alone in this. There are tons of resources out there that are designed to help specifically open up that heart chakra. Now, you can pick from the plethora of recommendations that I'm about to give you and try it on. See what fits, see what works. Discard what doesn't work for you, keep the rest. So let's go. First, ask yourself this question. Where in my life have I experienced or feel repressed heartache or grief? A twist on this question that you can also ask yourself is, where in my life do I feel repressed? Another twist on this question, where in my life do I feel stifled, like I'm not living up to my highest potential, where I feel separated from my truest, best, and possible self. Next, what to do. There are crystals that are recommended for helping nourish the heart chakra. Now, whether you believe in the power or the effectiveness of crystals or not, if right now you are experiencing loneliness, tapping on the door or walking in the tight walk of depression, experiencing a lack or an inability to forgive, experiencing a loss in trust or hope, you have a choice. You can choose to stay on the current path that you're on. And if that's working out for you, good. Or you can choose a different path and take steps to begin creating the world that you rightfully should be in and living up to your limitless potential, which is the point of this show. So your crystals, you can choose from, or grab all of them, <laughs> rose quartz, jade, emerald. Those are just a few. Now, let's get into number three of what to do. Essential oils to help with your heart chakra. Rose oil, lavender oil, bergamot, lemon balm, and finally, Lang Lang. Now, I'm certified in yoga and I would be remiss if I didn't talk to you about certain yoga poses that can help nourish and unblock your heart chakra. For those of you that 
are yogis or just dipping your toes in the water of being a yogi, have you ever wondered why you feel so enormously good after a yoga session? It's more than the physical workout, although I'm sure <laughs> that doesn't hurt. The reason why yoga feels so good once you're done, and even while you're doing it, is because each asana, each pose in yoga is designed to tap into each part of your chakra. And as I've shared with you, there are a total of seven and they're each responsible and tied into energetically as well as biologically different parts of the body. So imagine doing the equivalent of a physical as well as an energetic massage to all the parts of your body, whether they were feeling under the weather or not. But imagine giving all parts of your body, your heart, your mind, your creativity, your sense of higher self and feeling connected to something greater and bigger than you. Imagine with the practice of yoga, massaging, yielding, moving, shaping, unleashing that every single time. That is the reason why you feel so darn good and zingy <laughs> once you've completed your yoga practice. Since I am sharing with you and focusing on the heart chakra, I'm going to cover with you and demonstrate for you several key yoga poses. Before I demonstrate them, allow me to list them. The yoga poses that help the heart chakra include bow pose, cobra pose, standing back bend, lord of the dance, half lord of the fishes, and finally, wheel pose. So let's get into it, shall we? All right, so now we're in the yoga segment. Allow me to demonstrate each one of these poses. Before you begin, of course, check with your medical doctor to make sure that this form of physical activity is fine for you. If you experience any form of discomfort, such as pain, difficulty breathing, please just practice common sense and discontinue the pose, <laughs> okay? Other than that, if it's feeling good to you, then please do proceed. All right, first pose, bow pose. But before we go into bow pose, I'm going to warm you up just a little bit with cat-cow, just to loosen up that back. You're going to arch your back like so, like a cat, and flatten your back and cow. Inhale, arching the back. Exhale, cow. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Your bow pose, you're going to reach behind you and grab the top of your foot. Start with your ankle, if that's more comfortable, and then grab the top of your foot. Repeat for the opposite leg. To ensure that your body is in alignment, try to reduce the amount of space between your knees. So you reach back, grabbing the top of the foot, making sure to keep my knees close together. So what you don't want is to see how this looks. You want to be able to control and contain the power in the movement. So this is how 
bow pose looks in a form that you are not striving for. This is bow pose tighter and more controlled where I've rolled my feet somewhat inwards and rolled my legs somewhat inwards as well as my knees and then pull up and relax. Pull up, hold, relax, two. Pull up, hold, relax, three. Pull up, hold, relax, and four. Release your feet. Next, I'll cover your cobra pose. Are you guys still hanging on? Good. Cobra pose, you're in this pose just like so. And you're resting on your forearms. You wanna make sure, pretend as if there's a block between your legs, just in order to make sure that you don't experience too much outward rotation of your feet. And you're holding just like so in Cobra pose. And this is beneficial once again to your heart chakra. Hold here for a count of four. Inhale, exhale, one. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, drop the shoulders if they're up. Exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four, and release. Your standing, your standing back bend is next. Your standing back bend would be next. Start with standing back bend. Go into cat cow, followed by bow pose, followed by cobra pose. And you just gently lean into this back bend, just like so. Only lean into the point of comfort to get a good stretch in your back, not to the point of pain. Lord of the Dance pose. It is a glorious and beautiful pose. The most important thing is if you find it challenging and a stretch to execute this pose fully, one can always utilize the help of what's called a yoga strap. I will be demonstrating for you today Lord of the Dance pose, as well as a modified version of Lord of the Dance to ensure that you still get the energetic benefits of this asana pose for your heart chakra. And you want your toes pointing back, grabbing the top, the top of your foot. And as you lean forward. Now, the modified version would entail using a strap. What you do is take your strap and then commonly for a yoga strap has a buckle of some sort. So as you can see right here, you take your strap, you loop it through here, and that way you have more freedom of movement. You'll take the strap and you'll interlace it. You will loop your strap over your foot. So this allows you to basically extend your arms so that way you're not stretching, stretching and it's not as strenuous for you. We don't want to pop or break anything. So as you can see, I've placed the strap here over my foot. And I allow the strap to have some leeway as I go back 
and you'll see the strap begins to gently move. And you want to observe the same level of form. You also want to make sure to keep your hips level and lean into the pose until you're comfortable and keep your weight firmly planted on the ground. And you come out of the pose. Half Lord, Half Lord of the Fishes pose. You're going to take your leg and lay it on the floor with your knee bent like so. You'll take the opposite leg, cross it over the leg, the opposite leg, like so. Tuck this leg in here, just like so. And you're going to twist, twist your trunk of your body making sure that your shoulders are flat and that your gaze softly rests on something in the distance. You want to also make sure that the hand that is lying on your mat is firmly rooted on your mat and then breathe through this pose. Hold it for a count of four breaths. Inhale, exhale, one, Inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three, and inhale, exhale, four. You'll do the same thing for the opposite side. You want to also make sure that your back, you're not slumping into the pose. You want to make sure that your back is standing up good and straight. Twist your trunk of your body. Firmly root your hand to the floor and hold here for a count of four. Inhale, exhale, one. Inhale, make sure your shoulders are low and not being worn as earrings. Exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Release and unwind. And finally, one of my favorite poses is wheel pose. This takes just a little bit of stamina. You can stay in it for as long as you like, or just briefly take a visit and pass on through. It's also excellent for your heart chakra. Get into this position just like so. Make sure that your feet, and your hands are firmly planted on the ground and you will raise just like so. All right, so now you have experienced several different ways to increase the vibrancy of your heart chakra. Regular and consistent practice and implementation of these tips will help you so much. It will begin to increase your feelings of confidence. You'll begin to trust. It'll increase your sense of hope. It'll also begin to brighten your mood and reduce anxiety as you dig deeper into these poses and recommendations and tips that I've given you. Now, why is this important if you are struggling with food addiction or food addiction symptoms such as overeating, binge eating, emotional eating, nighttime binging? One word, triggers. When one experiences blockages in their heart chakra that manifest themselves as feeling lonely, feeling hopeless, having an inability to trust someone or certain places, this triggers for those people that are vulnerable to it, the need to cope with food. Once we learn how to unblock the heart chakra with some of these tips that I've given you here, one's ability to trust 
to feel less feelings of loneliness, to feel less feelings of hopelessness, all these negative feelings begin to recede. And that's really the key. You want these feelings to recede. Now, if you need additional help identifying and discovering why you feel this way and why these feelings are there, then there's another step and leg that's missing. And that step and leg is, that's missing are certain psychological tools that are designed to not only help you identify why you're experiencing these feelings, but get to the root of it and begin to address these problems and pull up those roots one by one. And imagine how your life would transform and how you would feel once you have the ability to manage and learn how to overcome these feelings or begin to even begin and even begin to understand what these feelings are trying to direct your attention to. You see, it's not such a thing as negative emotions and that emotions are bad. Your emotions are simply a sounding system to call your attention to something in your life that for you, and everyone is different, that for you may not be working and aligned with your purpose and what your goals are and what makes you happy. And imagine what it would feel like to finally be able to be focused and to understand what makes you happy and steer clear of situations that don't make you happy because for people that suffer from food addiction or just overeating and binging and emotional eating, the ability to stay on the path of what works for them is the key to preventing those triggers from taking hold and preventing the need to cope with food. All right, everyone, thank you for watching The Dr. Grant Show. My name is Dr. Kirsten Grant. I am the creator of EdibleAddiction.com. I created Edible Addiction and The Dr. Grant Show after losing my mother to obesity and food addiction. And after going through three of her dresser drawers, after everything had begun to die down, I had a light bulb moment and realized that most people don't have problems with food because my mother had three dresser drawers filled with diet books, magazine clippings, ranging all the way back before the day I was born. So it's not a lack of information. What it is, is the mind. And once you have the tools to manage and control and see a situation differently, you won't be as adversely impacted by it and you can keep going, keep living, keep breathing, keep expanding, keep walking in the glory of you. And that's what I want for you. If this sounds good, if this sounds like what you are missing, then perhaps we should have a conversation. I am the first person to create and design a scientific study designed to work with women that suffer from food addiction and food addiction symptoms such as overeating, binge eating, and emotional eating. And in a matter of just four weeks, help these women online overcome the need to overeat and cope with food. My information, you can find me on edibleaddiction.com or on Facebook under Edible Addiction, under Instagram under Kirsten Grant PhD. Set up a free consultation where we'll just simply get to know each other and oftentimes I can find a way to help you see a way clear through your problem and just that conversation. If not, we'll sit up there and design something that works just for you, customized based on your life, not anyone else's, but that works. Much love to you. Bye.